All right, guys, we're back with another video. Today we have another HW Fly. This, in this case, we have the RP2040 Pico Fly. That's what it's being called at this moment. It is basically an HW Fly with a Raspberry Pi IC chip, RP2040 there. And uh, the adapters, as you can see in the video, they're pretty much the same. Now, I know this one says version 3. People ask, do you have version 6? Uh, honestly, they're all the same. This is the latest version. This is, uh, it has latest firmware, which is, uh, you know, compatible with OLED. This is for an OLED. And then this comes with uh, the flex cable that connects right next to the uh, CPU point as well as the A point, the D point, C point, voltage, etc. And then the, the, uh, this adapter here, the D0 adapter. So we're going to get right, right to it. This is uh, a customer decided uh, they want to try to install this on their own. So I said, yeah, we'll make a video and here it is. Okay, hopefully this helps a lot of people out there, including uh, including anybody that wants to take the, uh, the installation upon themselves. It's not that hard. Just be very careful when you do it. I am not responsible for anything that goes on, so be very careful. What I'm doing right now is prying this metal plate open so that we can easily remove this cable here. This, I'm sorry, this um, shielding here. It is removed. What I like to do is remove a little bit, a little bit of thermal paste. This is pretty dry, as you can see. So we'll need to apply some fresh thermal paste on here. In the comments, people have been asking also what type of uh, tools I use. What do you see in the on the video? There is just a simple pick that I got at a local hobby store, and what I do is get a little one of these and just kind of sand, sand it on the edge to make it uh, pointy, to make it a little sharp so that I can scrape the point that I'm about to show you, okay? At the same time, I can clean this. And uh, next, we're gonna cut this piece of wire or metal here. Carefully, not to disturb the CPU. I like to use my nails for this. I think you can always use your your tool. We're going to zoom in for for this point that we're going to scrape. And carefully, again, this is sharp, so sharpen yours if it's not, so that you can easily scrape it out. You want to scrape this paint or whatever it is that's on there here on the masking of the board. Now that it's scraped, you add a little bit of flux. And this is the way I do it. I'm sure there's other ways, maybe even faster, maybe even better. This works for me. And so this is this is what I'm trying to um, show you guys, okay? If you guys have any input, any ideas, you guys are always welcome to share. Put them on the post and the messages there, in the comments. And at the same time, just like and subscribe if you like the video. Soldering iron that I use is a Sugon A19. I use other ones, but for this application, this works just fine. You want to tend that point, like you've seen on the video there. So I did that. We can always remove that flux and access this. Make sure that it's uh, tend and everything for you. We're going to turn this around and work on the on the back here on the dat zero adapter. Carefully remove this piece of metal here. I use my my nails, but you can use whatever you want. Sometimes when you're doing the switches, this tends to happen. So some of these will break from the motherboard. It's, it's fine. It's no problem. Sometimes even this side will break. When that happens, you just got to scrape a little piece here and use that to solder just to make sure that it's in place and it doesn't move. If this adapter moves, then you have to open it to switch the system back again 
and it's a whole lot of a waste of time so make sure you get it right the first time carefully align insert in there so for this I'm going to use this side the flux that I'm using is regular Amtec flux you can use whatever actually today I guess I grab this flux here if you need to use it go ahead this one uh, is a little more watery any flux will work the main thing I tell uh, people that call me and say how do you do this how do you do that is just just get to know your tools and and you find on the temperature of the uh, of the soldering iron I'm using 700 so I mean it just depends it just depends on your soldering station some some of them are a little less calibrated or it just all depends on how long you leave the the heat there as well so just be careful you want to push this adapter inside it's okay if it does that and on this side you want to push it a little more perfect that is good we want to make sure we are getting a good reading there so we, we get our multimeter set it to ohms mode ground on ground so we are getting 810 that is perfectly fine turn it over Add a little bit of flux here and pre-tin your your flex cable I like to do that just that point there that is good okay next thing align it to the position here some flex cables are better cut than others I guess you can say but if you line them up good then you're fine always apply your flux and secure the flex cable in place that A point is perfect might as well do this support here and then we'll continue with the other that is good that is soldered in place let's just add a little more heat okay even better so maybe grab a little bit of flux from here and prepare the C point and then the voltage perfectly fine grab yourself some 38 gauge wire if you have thinner maybe maybe even better Let me adjust the camera here real quick. All right, now we can route this to the back. I burned the uh, shielding of the wire with a the heat with the uh, soldering iron you guys can cut it or whatever you guys want but this works good just be careful know exactly what you're doing and then carefully without disturbing this cut it
for the purpose of this video I'm just going to install this like this so you guys can see um, how it boots and everything we're just going to put it in place and later on I'll put the shielding on there the plate again okay so this is point B point B is in place you know what let me just do it let me just put that shielding on the over okay so So we're going to apply some thermal paste down here real quick, clean this up a little bit and at the same time I'm going to put this back on there. For that we need to make a little incision or cut here so that when we set this back in place then it can freely move in there and, uh, and not get uh, kinked or, or cut in any, in any place. So we are going to make a little line here. We are going to cut between here and here, but right above, okay? Let me make those cuts and put some thermal paste on there. And I will be right back. Give me one second. We're just going to use some scissors here. Okay. All right, so let's apply some fresh thermal paste. I'll be right back. For this thermal paste, I'm using Quicksilver. There's other uh, thermal paste that you can use, but this works perfectly fine. Thermal paste uh, applied, and now we're just trying to put this Actually, let me remove that thermal paste real quick We gotta clean it first, so There you go Let's just clean it real quick You don't have to clean the whole chip. We just have access to need access to this, okay? Now that it is clean, we are going to solder, solder the the uh, flex cable. I like to push on the sides of the gold contacts here carefully without breaking the capacitor so that they stay in place all right next we add some thermal paste flex i'm sorry uh, flux Perfect. That's very good. And then just secure one side. Contacts look pretty nice and shiny. Let me add the thermal paste back on there. And you guys can just uh, use whatever 
quantity you guys want. As long as it's not smeared all over, you will be fine. So new thermal paste has been applied underneath. Now we want to close this. Carefully. Maybe push back those pins that we pried open a little bit earlier. Okay, now maybe clean it a little bit because we got our fingerprints all over. Now that we have done that, we can apply some double-sided tape on the chip itself. And then we can go ahead and do this here. Set it in place. And then we can do the ribbon cables, the flex cables here. Make sure you push this one in with your fingernail or whatever it is that you have and then and then press it, okay? Secure it in place. Now we can, we can go ahead and do this. So this is the reset point. This one goes right here. Reset point has been soldered like so. Okay, now let's go for the C point, which we already did up here. Maybe clean up this. And we will apply some Quicksilver or any kind of thermal paste you, you guys might have works fine. Let's make sure it's some quality. Let's test it real quick. We're going to plug it in. And we're going to go and try to find out if it's working by the uh, LED lights. Plugging in. So it's uh, white. And now it's trying to glitch. It should turn uh, green here shortly. There you go. So another installation successfully done. Like and subscribe if you like the video. We will make any uh, some more videos uh, very soon. We're going to be um, reballing, guys, a uh, CPU on a Nintendo Switch. So we've been um, doing a lot of testing, and we have other projects in uh, in mind. So just like and subscribe we'll see you guys soon we're going to be learning lots of things together okay thank you so much take care we'll see you guys in the next time